Lupin the Third, episodes 10, 11, and 12. I think we're gonna have a silly episode here where Lupin has been invited to attend an event with, with Fujiko and also with Rebecca, so he has to bounce back and forth between the two dates. <laughs> yep, sure enough, he shows up at the event with Rebecca wearing white because she likes white wine, and then with um, a Fujiko who's wearing red. He's already exhausted himself. He's only gone to Rebecca twice and Fujiko twice. <laughs> There's this gentleman who noticed that Lupin is on a date with two different women at once, and um, he seems to be issuing a challenge just as the auction begins. There's a wine that will make you fall in love. Fujiko wants the money that she would get from reselling the wine, and Rebecca wants the thrill of stealing the wine. Fujiko and Rebecca come face to face, they realize what's going on, and the two of them bicker a little bit. So now neither of them want him, and they're just in a competition with each other to get the wine first. They definitely have their own approaches. Um, Rebecca is much more, like, sneaky, I guess, and Fujiko has a very direct approach. Rebecca's so competitive she buys the entire mansion just so that she can automatically own the wine, just so she can beat Fujiko. I think what just happened is that it turns out everybody's been drinking the love wine all night, and because of the whole date thing, um, uh, what's his face? Lupin's the only one who hasn't drank any wine, and it turns out that Fujiko and uh, Rebecca are both going to be crazy in love with him. I thought they were going to make them fall in love with each other. That would have been <laughs> an interesting twist. So the gentleman from earlier, who was like looking down on Lupin for having two dates, um, is, is trying to steal the barrel. They end up getting the guy, but now it's just a showdown between the two of them. And Fujiko's asking Rebecca if she's ever actually fallen in love with someone. Even though she's married to Lupin, she doesn't think that she actually loves him. Lupin arrives and he's like, I win. And I am going to tell you exactly why I think this guy tried to steal the barrel. Well, well, that got dark very quickly. It's what I kind of suspected, but I didn't imagine they were actually going to go there. Where, so the, the wine... His wife was the one who made it, and then she disappeared mysteriously. Turns out his wife was inside the barrel, so he killed her and put her in a barrel, and he was worried about that getting out, as he should be. So he, he wanted to steal the barrel. So they're like, whatever, anyway, choose between us, or we would just all have to hang out together. And Lupin, of course, is excited about that notion, but uh, they were just messing with him, and they uh, kicked him in the face. Okay, so that's the end of that episode. Did not... Did not expect. <laughs> I didn't expect it to go to that dark place, but I guess the show's actually pretty good at handling that, surprisingly. Now gonna go on and watch episode ten. No, eleven. We open with Rebecca reading a book. Presumably, presumably, I think it was *The Dream of Italy*, which was talked about, everyone wanted, in, in a couple of episodes ago. And um, she discovered something in it and has gone out to uh, investigate whatever it is she discovered. Whenever she went, she encountered a bunch of guys from MI6 who, who abducted her. Thankfully, her, her, her butler guy, I think his name was Rob, um, sees the thing go down. So Lupin and his pals are on the case. Thankfully, Rob has a homing device on Rebecca, um, and so uh, he knows that they have taken her to the MI6 headquarters. So he knows the MI6 is behind it. And Rebecca also left the book open in her room, so Rob knows what she was looking for and gives it over to Lupin. Lupin quickly deciphers what Rebecca was looking at and um, figures, figures out where she was headed. Oh, okay, so the book is not The Dream of Italy, but she was looking for The Dream of Italy, and she is being tortured for information about that, or about the book, or about how she figured it out, or whatever. There's 13 agents in there that we gotta take out, and it's like retina scans and all that. It's really high tech. They call Fujiko, they're like, we'd really like your help on this. <laughs> and he also calls them the big guns. Zenigata. Of course, not, not saying like, hey, help us out. Just sending him a message for him to get to a certain place. So I think Lupin's going to use him somehow. Oh, they brought Nyx back. I figured they would. All right, so they, they're under the impression that Lupin has already broken into the facility. And that somebody, one of the agents is in disguise. 
and is secretly Lupin. Nyx and some other MI6 guys start fighting in a really interesting art style going on here. None of the agents trust each other because I think they all think that the other one is Lupin because someone's feeding them false information somehow to make them think that Lupin is broken in and disguised as one of them. Nyx grabs Rebecca and runs out. <laughs> maybe maybe Nyx is Lupin. Okay, so Nyx really is Nyx, but Nyx has brought Rebecca to a certain location where Lupin is, and he grabs her and takes her away, and now he's fighting against Lupin's two buddies. Um, and uh, th this was all part of the plan, clearly. Now we get a flashback of what happened. Fujiko seduced the guy who was in charge of the satellite communication stuff, so she got in and was able to interrupt all of that. Then Lupin was able to um, pretend to be the director and send all the information out to everyone else, pretending to be the director, telling them not to trust each other. So they all trusted the director and fought each other to get Rebecca and get out. By this time, the 12 other agents have arrived. So now it's uh, just them against all of these agents, plus Nyx. Suddenly, Rob appears, just flying in on a, in a car like a boss, and he's like, I'm gonna blow up your shit <laughs> if you don't let us go. <laughs> Nyx got mad! He's, uh, he's not happy with, um, with the, the way they've decided to take this. Everyone gets into the car, and um, Nyx is dodging bullets, and all of the agents are attacking him because he's getting out of control. They end up getting away. <laughs> and Rebecca thanks everybody, but she's a bit embarrassed about what happened. It turns out that the man who gave her that book was the person that she loved the most. Um, it was a brilliant Japanese man, um, and he ended up committing suicide. And uh, someone had told... I think Fujiko had told Rebecca that she, that Rebecca was incapable of loving anyone, but then there's this that we're learning about her finally. She's been trying to interpret this book the whole time to figure out what his intentions were and why he killed himself and all that. Lupin decides that as Rebecca's husband, it's his duty to, to decipher this book. <laughs> so with MI6, they've all been defeated and Nyx is gone. They have no idea where he went and um, he's still crazy with his red eyes glowing. Okay, we have one more episode to watch. It's episode 12. We're almost, this would put us at the halfway point of the series almost. Lupin pours hours into trying to decipher this book for um, Rebecca's sake. So much so that he is having a dream of himself in the labyrinth, the puzzles of the book. A very interesting dream sequence we have going on here. We're seeing flashbacks of Rebecca's past with this brilliant Japanese man, um, kind of through Lupin's weird dream. He's speaking to her in a very poetic, um, cryptic way, so that probably contributes to the puzzle. His name is Uraga Wataru, and um, Lupin is introducing himself and he's saying, oh, I have deciphered your puzzle, I know what's going on. The book was a trigger encoded that once you once you decipher it, then you get this like crazy memory. The personification of his thoughts and memories gets projected into Lupin's head. I mean, sure, <laughs> why not? I'll take it. It's fine. There might be some human experimentation going on at the Dream of Italy, which is not a good thing because um, Nix's daughter was um, kidnapped for that reason. So all of the the bugs that are crawling around in this world are attacking them. And Lupin is like, let's run away from them! And um, Uraga's like, I can't, no. I, I have to stay here. And Uraga is killed, and he says, go on, Lupin, take care of Rebecca, and good luck. And of course, he didn't commit suicide in real life. He, it, was, uh, it was set up to look that way. After Lupin awakens from his dream and tells everyone what he saw, um, he takes Rebecca and he, he knows where he has to go, what he has to do. Don't forget, Nyx is still in pursuit, <laughs> and he's crazy. And also, MI6 is in pursuit of Nyx because he's crazy. They go back to the abandoned house where um, Rebecca was kidnapped originally. And they're looking around, and it looks like it, Lupin's gonna burn it all down. It's pouring gasoline around, and Nyx shows up. And uh, then the fire is lit. <laughs> 
Uraga did not want his research to be used to control other people. They escaped the burning house, <laughs> and um, Nyx is still chasing after them, like a crazy person. <laughs> sudden change in Nyx is, makes things a lot more interesting, doesn't it? Lupin also tells Rebecca that he has to burn the book, too. Um, and now knowing that Uraga's consciousness is in the book, well not, no, that's a weird way to put it, like, a way of communicating with him is in the book? Whatever. Lupin knows that Uraga wants that to be destroyed. And he has to, of course, get Rebecca's permission. Lupin sends Rebecca ahead, um, to safety. And so now he's left to face off against Nyx, who shoots Lupin, but it grazes him. Oh, so it's just Nyx versus Lupin. Oh, he got shot, hopefully not in a vital area. Oh, it just says legs, so he can't run. So because Nyx has like heightened abilities, um, like a rat, um, a high frequency noise is really bothering him for a long time, whereas Lupin only hears it for a few seconds. Not sure exactly if that's something that can happen, but okay. MI6 guys shoot them from the building. Um, I, I had hoped it would just be sleeping medicine, but they're bleeding everywhere. Sometime later, Zenigata is talking to some MI6 guys. He found out who Nyx was, and Lupin is there, not shot, and he's asking for Lupin to be taken into his custody. Then he got to, doesn't care about what they've been doing this whole time. All he wants is Lupin. Meanwhile, Rebecca, she's burning the book. And she's like, oh, okay. Uh, Lupin's been captured. Hmm. I think everybody's got to get together and rescue Lupin. Because there's only one episode left of this, this, the half of the series. And, you know, it's going to be the big finale, I guess. That is the end of episode 12. I wish I had done this a little bit better so that it would end with episode 13, but I guess next up, I guess I'll watch episode 13 and then episode 14, just the two of them together, because episode 14 will start the second half. So I'll see you next time for that. Bye.